You ready? Yep. My name's Brian and welcome to Wrenchfest Garage. We're back on the Ultimate Ford Bentside Cummins and today we're going to see if this thing will run. Today is also the day we're going to find out how I did on rebuilding this transmission. Pretty worried about it. I don't know how it's going to go. I think I give it a 50-50 shot. It's either going to work or it's not. But we're going to find out. This is our to-do list to get the dent side running. We got to finish up the brakes. We got to mount the radiator and put coolant in it. We got to fill up the transmission with fluid. And then we got to get power, batteries and whatnot. Probably not going to get the paint fenders done today. That'll be for another day. But we also got to add the trans cooler lines. We just got to loop those together for now until I get all the parts to finish it up and mount it to the radiator. The ZF6 has an external transmission cooler. So it has lines that go from the transmission up to the radiator. And in order to get those lines back in and hooked up, I had to jack up the motor a little bit to get the lines underneath the cross member and I had to undo the motor mouse. So now I got to tighten those back up. And this is where the transmission cooler lines come out and it's not going to work for this application. So I'm going to cut them here and flare them. I'm just going to run a rubber line up to the radiator. These are the transmission cooler lines. I'm going to cut these off and flare them so I can put a rubber hose on them. The rubber holes will go up to the radiator cooler. Did something. How to hold a hole in the hole. And her. I hold a hold on there. Might even be a little too much. So I'm just making a loop. This hose is way too big. So the transmission fluid will just fall through here until we get it hooked up to the transmission cooler, the actual cooler and the radiator. That's just temporary. Unless it works, and it'll be permanent. Just kidding, no, we will run this through a cooler. That should work for now. We got the transmission cooler done, sort of. It's kind of a temporary solution. We just looped it so the transmission fluid can just come in and go back out without going through the cooler. But eventually we will get it hooked up to the cooler and it'll be right. But for today, just to start the truck, that's gonna work. This is just the get started list. This is not the drive list, done list. This is just to make it run. So we'll keep at it. These are the original brackets off of the 79 dent side that I have modified to accept the hydro boost off the 99. I just need to clean up the welds a little bit and then mount them up and we should be good to go. I got to clean up one of the holes for this. I kind of got a little close to it welding. So I'll just run the drill through it and it should be good. It's nice. That's good work. I'm going to shoot a little paint on these just to prevent rust, make it look a little better. Paint's all dry, so we're gonna go ahead and mount up these brackets for the Hydro Boost. It just doesn't seem right. Is that right? You painted over your arrows, now you'll never know. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? And I think that's right. We 
Look at that. It's doing something. Now we got the hydro boost mounted. We got to hook up the lines to it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up this transmission. Um, I've just got some quart bottles and a cap on it. So I'm gonna try to pour it in. It's gonna be not the easiest thing in the world. First thing I gotta do though is pull this drain plug out. Nope, fill plug. Not the drain plug, the fill plug. Oh my gosh. Guess that ain't <laughs> That bad. moved the whole truck. That ain't bad out in a while. I just want the drain plug. Nope, fill plug out. Put this drain pan under here because inevitably I'm gonna make a mess. That seat made a mess already. You're not dripping in the pan. And I'm not even dripping in the pan. First cart going in and only half of it on the floor. Got the transmission all filled up. I got the drain plug tight. Should be good to go. One more thing off the list. Probably better look at this transfer case. I don't know anything about it. So I'm gonna at least do a drain and fill on it and see what the fluid looks like. Oh, it's got fluid. It's actually full. Zumic's been in there since before the dawn of time, but whatever. We'll Is this look at it. $19.99? Oh yeah, it's good and dark. Ooh, I think I see a chunk of something come, on, come out of there. I'm not an expert, but pretty sure when chunks are coming out of the transfer. No, that's just the fluid. Yay. It might be all right. I'm gonna sit and let that drain while I do something else. Come back to it in a minute. Transfer case is all drained out, so we're gonna go ahead and fill it after I put the drain plug back in. <clears throat> what? <laughs> this bottle was so full that as soon as I touched it, it kind of exploded. Oh my gosh. <coughs> Scared me. It's all right, just me doing stupid stuff. A few moments later. We're gonna call that done. D-U-N-N, -N, done. We need to make a frame ground before we get too much further. So I found a nice hole. I've already got my cable ran. I just need to grind the paint off so it'll make a good connection and then run a bolt through it and that should be good. <laughs> Ooh, that's perfect. Okay, I like it. Okay, I like it. Now we need to see if we can get a little fuel up to the motor. There's a hand pump on the side of the lip pump, but right now it's on, the, I believe, the high side of the cam. So I'm gonna spin the motor over a little bit, see if I can get a little bit more action out of that pump, and see if I can get a little fuel up to this motor. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to bleed injectors at some point, but we'll see how much we can get up doing it this way. A lot of help. It is time to mount the radiator support, so we got somewhere to put our radiator and somewhere to hang our batteries from. All right, I gotta find a new home for the ground on this side for this battery. And there's already kind of a spot here, but I think I might drill it out, tap it out, make it half inch, give it a little bit more area to hold on to. Uh, the trick here is to get it started straight, straight-ish. Okay, I like it. Ooh. 
we got this drilled and tapped out for a new hole. So we're gonna hook the cable right here. This would be a great place for a ground. So this is the dual battery setup. And this side will go from the battery to the frame and the other side will go from the battery to the motor. And then there's also ground on the other side that goes from the motor to the frame. So it's a little bit redundant, but you cannot have too many grounds. Grounds are good. A couple of videos back, we had to rebuild the inner part of this fender right here. We had to weld on some material because it was basically rusted out because of battery acid. So what I haven't done yet is made the holes, duplicated the holes. So we're going to put these inner fenders together and hopefully the holes line up and we're just going to mark it and drill new holes. Ballpark. fender wells in we got the radiator sport on now we got somewhere to mount the battery trays and then somewhere to put the batteries so it's coming together issues we got drama not sure what happened but the fan is going to hit the lower radiator hose now so we need to we need to figure out a different solution for that so the body's sitting higher than the motor now so what we're gonna have to do is drop this down so evidently we've raised the body up enough that we're gonna have to drop the radiator down not a big deal we'll just drill a couple of new holes there's already some existing holes I'll drop it down to the next holes on the bottom holes and then I'll drill new ones for the top ones and see what that looks like. <laughs> looks like I need to do a little trimming on the inner fender well to get this hose to fit. This close, it just doesn't have enough clearance as of yet. We got all our clearance issues resolved. Now we can go ahead and fill this radiator full of fluid. One step closer. So I'm reusing the antifreeze because um, antifreeze is expensive. Oh, okay. Oh no. See now? Now it's dripping. That was like $30 worth of antifreeze right there. This is just your typical day at Ranch Fest Garage. It's either hot, really cold, or it's stormy. Every time. A few minutes later. One 
area that saw some extreme flooding over the past few days is San Pete County. Flood waters of a few inches to up to eight feet of water flooded the basements of some homes. Residents impacted by the flash flooding on Sunday are still drowning. This is the ABS brake module and I need to find a home for it so I can hook up all the brake lines. I don't know that I'm ever necessarily going to have ABS on this truck, but it's a possibility that I could. This is how all the brake lines hook together. It comes down from the master cylinder, hooks to this, and then it hooks to the other brake lines which go to all the wheels. So I, yeah, I just need to find a home for it. There's, right now I don't feel like there's any room for it, so we're figuring it out. That's something there. I think I'm below, I'm below the master. So that would go there. It'd be helpful if I could drop that down and I could. But no, I couldn't. I'm just gonna drill a hole basically right here and mount this thing. It's gonna be temporary, but it looks like the brake lines will go right to it. Fit. Is this actually gonna work? We got it mounted. Now hopefully the brake lines will fit up here. Um, this might work. I wish I'd get a little lower, but it is what it is. Okay, we got four lines. I just got one more, I think. Holy smokes, I think I got them. That was rough. I'm going to take a precautionary measure here. I'm gonna jack up the rear end and put it on jack stands. Just in case this thing starts up and wants to drive through my garage, it won't be able to. I'm not even sure this jet can lift this heavy. Go get off the ground. Okay, it's time to see if we can roll this thing out of the garage. I have sketchy brakes, possibly sketchy steering, but we're just gonna drive it out of the garage and. Hopefully nobody dies. Sketchy steering. Sketchy steering. I don't, oh, <laughs> wait, wait, we forgot the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Might need that. Okay, here it is. Okay. It's over there in the passenger floor. Yeah, we got steering. Is that how that works? You just slide it on? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. okay. Screaming yell if I'm gonna hit the garage. I'm not sure I can stop or steer to avoid it, but this wire, the white wire. Yep. Pull that sucker. Okay, I'm gonna start, so watch out. Get ready to pull that white wire if it rolls forward at all. You ready? Yep. Power for reverse. Uh, you're going forward. <laughs> yeah. They're both going the same way. the first that truck has driven in geez how long has it been probably five months at least well let's be honest this is the first time this truck's ever actually drove under the f450 chassis so pretty happy with it so far everything's good no major leaks some issues i gotta work out but that's always part of it so yeah two thumbs up way up feels pretty great to have this thing out of the garage under its own power that's about all we're gonna get done this week. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna drive this thing. Thanks for watching.